SpaceX has sped up the rollout of their Starlink satellite internet. And here's why it matters to you. Up until recently, you had to get an invite to join SpaceX's Starlink internet data program, but now they've opened it up to anyone in an eligible location, Canadians included. If you go to the Starlink website, you can enter your email and home address, quickly confirm your exact location with a pin on a map, and you'll be instantly notified if you can sign up for the program, or you can get an email when it becomes available in your location. While the beta, dubbed by SpaceX, as the better than nothing beta won't be perfect, stick around and we'll dig into the reasons why you should give it a try and why you should care about SpaceX entering this market at all. So take a moment to smash that like button, hit subscribe to see more technology, Paul, and get ready to dive into Starlink satellite internet. So SpaceX is building a network of satellites for internet access. I feel like I've heard of this concept before. Oh yeah, satellite internet. It's a service that's old as time. Okay, well, as old as the new millennia. Satellite internet has been around since the early 2000s. It only feels older because by all accounts, it's always been so slow and janky and only marginally better than dial-up. So what's the big deal about a new satellite internet provider? Well, the big deal is it's SpaceX. SpaceX is run by Elon Musk, well-known tech visionary and market disruptor. If Elon is gonna enter a new market, it's because he's confident that he can make a difference there. So it should come as no surprise that there's some pretty innovative tech backing up the Starlink internet service. Most notably, the orbit of the satellites is actually quite different than the current competitors. See, most satellites that are used for internet communications are in what's called a geosynchronous orbit. These satellites are in a very high orbit above the Earth's equator, roughly 35,000 kilometers above. And they orbit the Earth in the exact same amount of time as it takes the Earth to complete a rotation. In other words, the satellite stays above one fixed position of the Earth and to a ground observer appears effectively motionless. As you can imagine, this type of orbit has some upsides, which is why it's used. The biggest upside is that your satellite dish doesn't have to move around to track the satellite. You can point your dish at it and set it and forget it. If you've ever used satellite TV or satellite internet before, you've probably experienced this. It's tricky to get the dish pointed just right, but once you do, your setup is complete. But this orbit results in a major drawback too. It's called high latency, also referred to as a high ping rate. Basically because of how far away the satellites are, it takes a long time for the signal to get sent back and forth between the ground receiver and orbiting satellites. This matters if you want to do more than check your email. To combat the issue of high latency, SpaceX is developing a network of low Earth orbit, or LEO, satellites. By reducing the amount of distance between the receiver and the satellite, they can get much faster internet speeds, which could allow you to have multiple people using your internet connection at the same time, or enjoy online gaming and video calls. Activities that you just can't do with traditional high latency satellite internet. Now, to be fair, SpaceX isn't the only company working on implementing this technology but they've made the most progress and they've got the highest stated ambitions for their services. SpaceX's biggest competition comes from a competitor with similarly deep pockets. Amazon has already gotten approval from the Federal Communication Commission for their project Kuiper, but unlike SpaceX, they have yet to launch any satellites. Amazon has also focused their communications around offering satellite internet to the US only. It's yet to be determined if they plan on branching out. It seems likely since it's estimated that this will be a $410 billion industry by 2040, but Amazon hasn't publicly released any statements on expanding their services. But for now, Starlink holds the biggest ambitions as they've publicly stated that their goal is to provide high-speed internet access across all populated regions of Earth in 2021. Starlink is already available in remote areas of Canada and people
People are reporting on how life-changing the technology has been. For remote communities with internet so bad that they've struggled with even trying to open an email attachment. To be able to do a video call with family members, stream video content, access telemedical services, and participate in online education has created a radical shift for their quality of life. Now consider the challenges of parents working from home and kids learning from home due to quarantine restrictions. Nearly everyone has reported issues with poor internet connectivity, bottlenecking their work. Then there's the outpouring of people from city centers into rural locales as more jobs have remote work options available. Given the choice of working here or here, a lot of people will make this choice. Well, Starlink is on track to make that choice completely viable. To accomplish global Starlink coverage and drastically improve the quality of life for billions of people around the world, a mesh network of 12,000 satellites needs to be built. One big critique of the project is that due to their low orbit, these satellites will be visible from Earth, obstructing views of the night sky. As of November 2020, 955 Starlink satellites had been launched. That's only about seven 7.5% of those 12,000 satellites. So the concern of night sky obstruction is pretty valid. To minimize the visual impact, the satellites are being made as small as possible with an innovative flat panel design and single integrated solar array. With that many satellites, you also don't want them hanging around when their useful lifespan is done. There are actually industry regulations and standards in place to prevent a buildup of space junk. Strange to think about, but it's a real problem. With the higher orbits already being littered with old satellites or space junk, essentially. SpaceX is meeting and exceeding all of those industry regulations and standards. To do this, SpaceX satellites have Krypton powered ion thrusters to avoid collisions and to be able to deorbit over the course of a few months. Even if these thrusters failed, the satellites are designed to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere within one to five years, helping to keep space clean. In comparison, a higher orbit satellite would require require thousands of years to burn up. Like I said, there's some pretty cool tech behind that satellite internet connection that we'll probably be taking for granted in a few years. All of this innovative tech does come at a steep price, even in their better than nothing beta stage. At a current setup price of about $820 Canadian and a service fee of $129 a month, Starlink isn't exactly the cheapest internet service around. But depending on the lifestyle or location you want to live, it may just be the best for you. This technology could have a major influence on what jobs you choose in the future, where you decide to live, and even could balance the scales for people who are living in remote areas by removing barriers to things like education and telehealth. In a time where remote work is becoming more of the norm, Starlink is poised to double down on its global impact and potential customer base. So there it is, the reasons why I think Starlink is going to revolutionize the way we connect and the way we live. Let me know if you agree. Thanks for joining me in this episode of Technology Paul. Hit that like button, subscribe to see more Technology Paul, and maybe share this video with a friend if their current internet is a little slow. We'll see you in the next one.